is now let's flip it. What didn't we see? What 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 didn't live up to expectations as far as players and coaches? For me, it was some of these teams, some of these some of these players, some of these running backs. Um, for one, I have been talking about Lou Nichols out of Central uh, Michigan mm-hmm. all year long. Came out led led the country, I think, all purpose yards a year ago, and this yep. year just he he dealt with injuries, he dealt with problems here and there, but it just it just was not the same. Um, and this was a guy that did it in spite, uh, you know, despite maybe not having the best team in Central Michigan. But after this, I, I, he was one of those I thought bet on himself and stayed back. And maybe he should have just parlayed all his success he had last year to the pros because, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's a great athlete, but I don't know that he gets drafted prior to the fifth round. If that right now, it's yeah, it's, it's stressful. What do you think, man? Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. Um, and I mean, a lot of that too has to factor in the team around him. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the injuries played a huge factor. Um, but that Mac overall has gotten a lot better too. So yes. uh, better competition, didn't have as much around him to help him this year. Uh, and you look at the draft, running backs are devalued now. Obviously, yes. we're, we're talking about Bajon Robinson is probably a lock for the first round. But after that, you're maybe two running backs in the second round, maybe two or three in the third round. Then after that, it's fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. A lot of these big time running backs too are undrafted. Um, it's yeah, it sucks because I think he should have gone there as well. Mm-hmm. But um he should have gone to the NFL instead of staying. Um, but that's the risk you take, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Anthony says, Coastal Carolina had uh, them to come back and dominate, maybe yeah. finish top 10. Um, yeah, okay. Did you you feel that? You thought that way too? I didn't think maybe top 10, but they, they definitely fell short of expectations for me this year, yeah. especially with Grayson McCall and just a lot of that hype that was built around them. Yeah. I expected them to be in that – I'll say the 11 to kind of 17 range, mm-hmm. like a very good team, maybe playing in a new year's six bowl. Um, but yeah, they, they fell short of expectations for me. Yeah. I, I too saw them top 20. Um, but I, I did question how they would go up against like the perennial powers, the top tier teams. Um, yeah. And you know, they, you know, they, they had a rough year and a hey, McCall's coming back for another year. So we'll see if he could, you know, exceed expectations coming into next year, but they were definitely one that kind of took a step back. Yeah, took a step back. Are are you? I'm not. I'm not no, I'm not going to do that. I apologize. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be on here live doing that stuff. I mean, um, yeah. I'll go to the SEC for another massive disappointment. Probably the disappointment. It's Texas yeah. A&M. Absolutely. Everyone had. I mean, they were ranked like fourth or fifth to begin the year. Yeah. And I mean. <laughs> they were ranked as high as the number of losses. Like they yeah. had more losses than their ranking was to be in the year. Like uh, didn't even make a bowl and the number one recruiting class and Jimbo Fisher is a top 10 coach in college football. And just to have that lackluster of a season. Uh, yeah. Biggest, biggest disappointment to me. Absolutely. I, oh, absolutely. Absolutely, you have to go there. And then another one that a uh, the quarterbacks getting highly touted, but maybe didn't have a lot of help. Kentucky. I I came yep. into this year with with you know Levis really being that guy. This is gonna he's gonna jump his draft stock up and he's really gonna show people. And now, mind you, he didn't have Rodriguez for like the first four games, and he really didn't have the team that he had in the past. So I thought yeah. that really really shocked me on how far they uh, they dropped because. Those are one of the teams that we were looking into this year. Like, can anybody give Georgia a run? I thought a healthy Kentucky team could have done it based on the year prior to that, but no. Anthony's oh, going okay. right along with you, right? Oh, as you started Kentucky. talking about it, he stayed. Yep, stayed. Yeah. Well, yeah, he, yeah, SEC. Oh, for sure. So, yeah, that's that's definitely uh, somebody that I didn't. Um, what other teams? Because I, I know for me, one of those that really kind of. Uh, kind of mess with me out of the Pac-12. And I, I'm going to go ahead and, and say it. it. It messed with me all year long. And it was Arizona State. I didn't expect Arizona State to be in powers, but I 
I'm a Herm Edwards guy. You play yep. to win the game. Like, I love that guy. So him being there and seeing some of the guys that they had that had come into the draft from him, I was sitting here, you know, Rashad White and Nikhil Harry. You got some of these guys that are they're making contributions on the team. Yes, Ash, ASU. <laughs> I know you're you're near there, aren't you, Ash? That's right. <laughs> but and that's Sid's team. Right. When I thought well. Herm Edwards would have elevated them, and then for them to, you know, obviously fire him the way they did and, and attempt to just build a coup and get him out of there the way they did. I honestly, I yeah, I, I, it just it killed me. It killed me because I really thought they could have been something that could have at least challenged in the Pac-12, but they just they got more issues at in-house than I expected. It so, really hurt them to lose Jaden Daniels as well to, for him yeah. to transfer to LSU. Yeah, he was a law. He was a big part of their success from the year prior. Obviously, Rashad White as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so to lose both of them really hurt them. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, there, there's multiple other disappointments. The more I think, like Wisconsin, is yes. a big one for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, Iowa, kind of, uh, West Virginia, mm. Oklahoma yeah. State, like Anthony said, Baylor, yeah, um, BYU, mm-hmm. Oklahoma, throw Houston in there, Houston, yeah, Houston, yep, um, yeah, uh, there, I mean. When you're picking out of 150 teams, there's going to be a ton of disappointment. Oh, right, <laughs> <But> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yo, any any um any players, any quarterbacks that maybe didn't do it? I know it's sticking with the ACC. Obviously, injuries played a part in this. Devin Leary, you know, he was supposed yeah. to be one in one A one B with Sam Hartman. Obviously, the injury uh, stopped that. Then you have also Brennan Armstrong who, yep. again, another one who I can't really blame because there was a new coach, a whole new system that they ran, which totally switched things up. But at the same time, he still brought back his two stud receivers who each had 1,000 yards the year before. So I felt I'm, I was one of those in the beginning of the year. That I feel like this is Colin Cowherd where I was wrong because <laughs> yeah. Brennan Armstrong definitely laid an egg this year in, a, in an ACC that – we're moving up, but you could say Clemson was in down year. Not really, but they, with DJ in there, it, it was a struggle for them. And, you know, some of these other teams were still kind of fighting their footing. I thought this was an opportunity um, for him to show, for him to show up. And uh, he didn't, he didn't at UVA. So. Yeah. I mean, you look at him, a couple other ACC quarterbacks, Kadon Slovis, JT Daniels. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even yeah. see that comment as I said it. <laughs> um, yeah. JT Daniels. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Oh, there was one other one I had in mind. Let's see if I can come up with it again here. Let me see. Um. I I saw I saw the the Cam McCormick uh comment there, and it kind of threw me off. I mean, <laughs> Spencer Sanders a little bit, and it wasn't yeah. really the stats. It was more. I mean, interceptions. He it's, threw a lot of interceptions this year. Yeah. Um. But just kind of like what Anthony said before with we expected Oklahoma state to be so much better than they were. And they were just kind of meh. Like mm-hmm. they were, they were okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially how uh, they started the season. Matters. Yeah. Once I mean, they lost to TCU, they kind of fell apart. Right. Right. I mean, that was a heartbreaking one. That was, they came to you and you lost in overtime. So, mm-hmm. I mean, as a coach, Oh no, no, no. My, my big quarterback one that just reminded me it was DJ. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, without a doubt, you he was one of these guys that was talked about as a potential top five pick, pretty much a Heisman. lock to go in the first round. Yeah, yeah. The Heisman, Clemson was going back to the playoff, and then he was just, he was bad last year, and he was worse this year. He was awful this year. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you look at it, you got you guys played them in the ACC championship game. He gets one or two drives, plays awful, then they get Klubnik in, and it's just they're just on a roll. They just can't yeah. miss. Like it's thanks, Alex. Thanks. I, uh, thanks for reminding me, man. <laughs> no, but I mean, to I, your point. <laughs> to your point. That's absolutely right. And I'm sitting here like, oh, keep him in the game. Keep him in the yeah. game. As soon as Klubnik came in, I, I just sat back in the chair. Like, here we go. Because yep. Klubnik is that guy. He is better than DJ. And DJ, okay, maybe body type, maybe you know, athletic ability is a little bit better. But Klubnik can sit in that pocket. He can yep. sit here and and dissect the defense. 
and he has wheels on the same time. So it's not like you're dropping off that much with that athleticism. Klubnik yeah. is their guy, man. What what yeah. took him so long? I don't know that he needed to make that move. It wasn't imperative for him to make it because you have a defense with has you know top ten picks on that D line. You have studs in the in the, in the secondary and linebacker, and you still have Shipley at running back. You still have wide receivers and weapons at running back. DJ just couldn't almost like Spencer Rattler just can't seem to figure it out. He has a couple games that are decent, but it's just in the end of the day, he's gonna let you down. Well, I mean, you look at it, and they were they were still beating most of the teams that they needed to beat with DJ as the quarterback. So mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't a, a do or die. And any time it was a do or die moment when they were losing late in the game, which quarterback did they go to? They went to Klubnik to win yeah. them some of these games. So, I mean, it was – I think it was a lot of trying to help DJ find himself and kind of push him to get out and go to the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um but then when you realize it just – it was going to affect your team too much, then you go to Cade. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll see what happens in this coming year, man, if Cade can be it. I want to address one more question before we kind of move out towards the end. Scott said earlier, do you think Colorado Buffaloes will win a championship? And that's And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Pac-12. I'm going to say, uh, you know, and, and beyond. I'll start with Pac-12. Shoot, I'll even start with the championship between them and Colorado State. Let's let's get past that one first because both yeah. of those teams were terrible last year. Yeah, it was. I mean, they were two of the last 150 teams that we're talking about to have a win. So mm-hmm. uh, that's two very very bad programs. Um, are, are we talking within a certain time frame? Because I think eventually they win the Pac-12, especially with USC and UCLA leaving. Leaving, right. Um, I think this year a realistic expectation is to get bowl eligible, win six mm-hmm. games. Yeah. I mean, you've got you've got a ton of talent following Dion there, but it still takes time, right? From especially from what that program was. Mm-hmm. So expect six i'll say five to eight wins this year mm. just because a lot of games can go either way um and then i think two three maybe four years down the road is where you start expecting the conference championships i think it's a long time before you expect a national championship i don't know if Dion stays there long enough to get a national that's, championship yep, that's but yep. um i think conference championships are definitely in play in the next few years yeah and that's and I think that's where you're gonna have to kind of cap it because of the fact, like you said, I don't see Dion stand there. I think this is the stepping stone. I still have my eyes set for him to eventually go to FSU. Yeah, like without you know what a doubt. Mean? That's kind of I think with this all leading into that. So for me, I think he'll get them back on the right trend. He'll get them right on the right trajectory and get them back maybe in the conversation. He'll win some games he probably shouldn't win um, going yeah. into the next couple years. But I, I don't, I can't see him staying, especially in this coaching lands, uh, landscape. I can't see him staying five years, much less ten or like a a saving or something like that. I think he's here at least three years, just more to see his boys and like Travis Hunter and them off to the NFL, right? But then I think if it's, say, three years down the road, all those guys are gone and Norvell gets fired or quits or retires or at least for another job. Like, I, I fully expect Deion Sanders to be the next Florida State coach after Mike Norvell. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I don't think there's another coach in between them. No, I think they're grooming it right for that. So, yep. yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Um, Anthony says coaches have to get to the point yes. where they start realizing not every high school stud is going to be the same or better in college, especially these players that have never lost in high school. Um, they don't know how to handle failure because they've never experienced yes, it. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Mm. And then <laughs> thank you, Bo Nix, for screwing <laughs> us. <laughs> the I want to see them play so bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that would be a game. Yo. Yeah. Do you think Marshall Falk would be a good college coach? That's interesting. I don't know. I mean, we've seen this influx of, of ex players turning coaches. Uh, you know, we got Dion, obviously, and yeah. then you got um Eddie George at Tennessee State. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Derek Ed Reed. 
Ed Reed just picked that one. Yeah, so you got yeah. a bunch of these guys coming back to see it. So Will's, I, I don't know. I don't know if he's been coaching. A lot of these guys have coached either high school or smaller colleges or somewhere to move into this. I, for as far as I know, Marshall Falk has been in the, you know, in the booth or NFL, yeah. you know, and all that stuff. So, but as we saw with the Colts, as long as you <laughs> know football, you can be a head yeah. coach. So, hey, Jeff Saturday, what's up? <laughs> well, I mean, if you look at Dion, like I listened to his his full interview with the Pat McAfee show. Uh, I think it was like a week ago or whatever. But this this wasn't his first coaching job. Yeah, he was coaching his kids from like twelve years old, like Pee Wee, Adam Bantam, all the way up. He coached them through like through the minor football. He coached them through high school. He coached like, and then he finally got that call from Jackson State. And when and then it was like, oh, okay, Dad, I'm gonna come play for you. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, he had kids already in the college football scene that were like, okay, I'm gonna come play for you. Yeah. Like Shiloh, and Shiloh was already playing, so um, it's not it's not like Dion just magically showed up at the college level. He he did it like every other coach. He coached mm-hmm. minor football, then came up to high school, then went to college. Now he's he said it stops there. He says he has no desire to go to the NFL. Oh yeah, he's not going to these millionaires that don't care about the game anymore. Is how he put it. Mm. Um, uh, so, aren't we going kind of going in that direction? Well, I think I think if you get fully into that direction in college football, then I think you see him make his exit. Yeah, because his whole thing about this now is getting these kids that still love the game. I mean, he talked about it too. Is he when he sits down with these kids in these interviews? It's what do you want from this? And if it's anything other than to grow as a man and make it to the NFL, he writes you off completely. If yeah. your goal is still, I want to be an NFL player, he he will get you there. Yeah. And, I mean, he's shown that. he uh, James Houston was from Jackson State. Right. Drafted, we drafted him in the sixth round. And I mean, he was one of the top rookie edge rushers this year. Right. So, I mean, it's it's one of those things where – he he's got the right kind of players in mind and the right the right mindset coming into that program. So, oh yeah, oh yeah. And look, he he's been around. He knows the system. He knows the pitfalls, what to look for and what to look out yeah. for. You know. So, I, sh- hey, shout out to him. And he he's he, we already seen those guys are following him. He was yeah. not shy about saying, "Hey, I'm going. I'm bringing baggage with me." Those guys weren't shy about saying, "Coach Dion, we're coming." You know, we're yeah. trying to go play to you and, and watch out for that Pac-12 because they've been making some noise in the transfer yeah. portal. So, you know, they, they starting to up that up that ante a little bit. So we'll we'll see what happens in this uh, coming year um, real quick. Uh, Anthony says, I ain't mad at it. Uh, if you get to a P5 slot, the money is stupid and it's contractually guaranteed. Unlike NFL money, unless yeah. you're guaranteed, guaranteed up front. So, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like that clip, be sure to check out the other great content from the Let's Talk Football community. And as always, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when more great content like this becomes available.